Ako, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii is my mainland on every Friday at 3 p.m. My name is Jody Malinowski, and I am the Oahu Group Coordinator for the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Kaui Lucas and the Think Tech Ohana have graciously allowed the Sierra Club Oahu Group to guest host Hawaii is my mainland for the next few weeks so that we can discuss some of the environmental issues our organization is championing. Today we're going to discuss our outings program and the trail issues facing Oahu. Joining me is our guest Randy Ching, a superstar volunteer with the Sierra Club Oahu Group and an outings leader for nearly 25 years. Welcome Randy. Randy, the Sierra Club is an environmental nonprofit organization that has been operating nationally for 125 years. Can you talk a little bit about the history of the Sierra Club and what the mission statement is? Okay, so about 125 years ago, there was this guy named John Muir, and he hiked across America basically with a cup of tea and a loaf of bread. And so he uh, fell in love with the Sierra Nevadas, which he called the Range of Light. And he started the Sierra Club basically to protect the Sierra Nevadas. So that's why they call it the Sierra Club. And that was in 1892, and the club has been around now for 125 years. Um, it's been doing environmental work, and mostly people know it as a hiking club. Even though we, we do a lot of conservation, advocacy, lobbying, they know us as a hiking club, a lot of people here. Um, and the uh, mission of the club is to explore, enjoy, and protect the wild places of the planet. Great. Mm -hmm. And next year, the Sierra Club of Hawaii is going to be 50 years old. So I know we're going to celebrate with a couple of a weekend long of events, including some hiking and some camping, yep. and a big fundraiser at Kualoa Ranch. So really excited about that. So speaking of hiking, we're going to talk today about one of our most popular programs, which is our outings program. And um, tell us, what is the outings program all about? Okay, so our outings program is a program where we take people into the wilderness, into nature. We usually uh, have a hike or a service project every weekend, um, and it's led by uh, volunteers who uh, are trained as outings leaders according to the National Sierra Club uh, requirements. And so I've been an outings leader for about 23, 24 years now. And so in that time, I've probably led several hundred hikes and service projects. It's, uh, it's a way to get people connected again with nature. And it's something that we feel that follows in the tradition of John Muir, who basically said, you get people out into the forest, get them out into the wilderness, they learn to love it. And if they learn to love it, they will fight to protect it. So that's really John Muir's philosophy is, get people out, outdoors, get them into nature so that they'll learn to love it, and anything they love, they, can, they will protect. So let's see some of these photos here. These are recent photos from the Oahu Group outings. Yeah, so this is uh, at the top of Nu'uanu Trail where it comes uh, up from the Judd Trail, and so this is where it starts flattening out, and if you were to f go from here out towards um, the Pali Highway, it's basically about a mile until you get to the Overlook, which is where people like to have a lunch break and you can look down on the new water reservoir. So this is a really nice place. It's got a cool breeze and I'd say about, hmm, maybe a couple hundred feet above where you, when you come into the Judd Trail and you start, this is about maybe 300 feet uh, elevation gain. Cool. Um, do we have other photos that we can show of our hikes? Okay, so this is kind of a point. It's a natural area reserve. If you look in the, at the background, you'll see a predator-proof fence, and people enter through that little uh, structure that has two gates. And the reason they have two gates is because if you have a, a person who goes in with only one gate, somebody, something can sneak in um, through the gate. So they, they put the second gate in there so that when you close the first gate, nothing can sneak in. And it, it, it worked really well in New Zealand, so we just basically stole this idea from New Zealand. And this is a group of people doing a service project out there with Colleen, who's the 
outings leader there. So I'm guessing they probably did a little bit of weeding, maybe a little bit of planting as well. All right. Mm -hmm. And this is Coco Crater Botanical Garden. And we usually have one outing a year here so that people can see uh, what's in the crater. It's one of the biggest botanical gardens. And a lot of people who live here and who are born and raised here don't even know that this uh, garden exists. Yeah, this was a photography hike. So yeah. a lot of different things that the outings group does. Yeah, the photography hikes are great because you get to go as slow as you like and take as many pictures as you like. Mm. This is Kaneohe Marine Corps Base. This is the new Pia Ponds, and this is mangrove uh, removal. Every place else in the mainland, mangroves are really, they, they try to <laughs> maintain them, try to hold on to them because they buffer against wave action and storms. But in Hawaii, it's kind of a nuisance. And it makes it hard to do uh, uh, restoration of the ponds for the, the fish and the birds, so they, the, the service project here is to just basically remove them. It's not easy. I've done it many times, and it's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. This is at the top of Pu'uma Ele Ele. For those of you who don't know where it is, it's uh, Temple Valley in the back of the, the, um, the townhouses. It's uh, about a 500-foot elevation gain, kind of steep, but once you get to the top, there's some great views of uh, the windward side. Yeah, so these are just photos from the past couple of months from our outings team. So Sierra Club Oahu Group has really been instrumental in maintaining some of these trails. I know we built like Kulio'o Ridge. You spent two years working on Kulio'o. Well, I didn't build it, but I, I, I helped maintain it. For two years, you put well, three steps years, in. Three years, and I put in many hundreds of steps. Right. Yeah, not by myself 100%, but most of those steps were put in by me. I had a lot of help though from Sierra Club volunteers, yeah. So we lead weekly hikes basically around the entire island. Yeah, pretty much. The last uh, five or six years we've been more on the Kolau side. We used to do a lot of work out on the Waianae Mountain side, but we've kind of, the, the projects we used to do on the Waianae side, we've, we've let lapse. So most of our stuff now is on the Kolau side. Yeah. So last year, there was a record number of tourists coming to Hawaii, almost mm -hmm. 9 million people. And we also see that there's been an influx of social media, um, people promoting hikes and videos, sometimes on dangerous and illegal and closed trails. So what do you think about that? How has that impacted our trails on Oahu? Okay, so for me, this is uh, a really important issue, and I... I I get very um, passionate about it. I get on my soapbox, and I, I have a feeling that uh, a lot of people agree with me because uh, because I do so much trail maintenance, I'm very much aware of the impact uh, all the millions of people who come to Hawaii have on our natural resource space, especially our trails. And I've, I've done a lot of work on Manoa Falls Trail. I've done a lot of work on Kulio'o, Hawaii Lower Ridge. And what I see is that all these people are having a tremendous impact in terms of uh, breaking down all of the, the uh, doing, breaking down all the work that the volunteers have put in over the years. And what I notice is that I <laughs> firstly can't keep up. So I, I, I've gone back to Kulio even after 2010, 11, and 12 when I put in most of my time there. I go back to check the, the trail every now and then. And I notice that all the work I've done in the three, four, five years since I put in all that work, it's like I didn't do anything. Yeah, it needs constant maintenance. Uh, and I'm, I'm getting old, so I just, I'm not doing it anymore. It's because it's, it's, it's too much work, and every time I go back, I see, look, it's all that work I did last month, just, you know. So it, there's got to be some way we can help DLNR, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, get the resources, either either um, money and or bodies, to help maintain the state trails. Because, for example, Kurio'o is a state trail. It's part of the Na'alahele trail system. And one of the real interesting things is that after many complaints <laughs> from uh, people who live near the trailhead, they're finally going to put in a sign at the trailhead. 
maybe 20 years too late, but better late than never. So um, I made some suggestions. Yeah, so that's some of the things I know the Oahu Group has been doing, in addition to just doing some of the restoration and trail work that we do. I know that we did some lobbying at the Capitol to try and get more funding for DLNR to do trail maintenance on Na Alahele, and I'm sure you're going to continue doing that because you feel so strongly about yes, that. Yes, yes, I do, and I, I, I'm a big fan of giving uh, DLNR the resources to do their job. So one of the bills that was introduced last session was SB 703, which would have taken some of the money given to the Hawaii Tourism Authority, HTA, and taken some of that money, given it to the Department of Land and Natural Resources so that they can help uh, or keep, or preserve, maintain a lot of the, uh, the uh, resources that tourists and locals come to depend on. So for example, state parks, beaches, trails, um, and one of the reasons Senator Thielen, who was one of the co-sponsors of the bill, one of the reasons she thinks that it didn't pass was because it was too generic. Mm. It was said basically, take the money from HTA, give it to DLNR. And it didn't say, like, for what? Specifically, was it to put restrooms in state parks? Was it to maintain state trails? Was it to... Uh, uh, clean up the beaches. So she thinks that we should have another go at it this session where we we change the language in the bill so that it's much more specific. The money mm -hmm. will be given to DLNR to do the following and be very specific. So she thinks that will give the bill a better chance of passing. Right. So yeah. an ongoing issue for the club and something that we have done is created a hiking Hawaii tips <laughs> to do education. Yeah. So maybe uh -huh. we can pull up that flyer yeah. and show our top 10 tips. And these are just tips to cover things about safety, mm -hmm. being courteous of people, the neighbors uh -huh. and the residents. Uh -huh. um, I, I think, you know, for me, if I had to choose just one, I would say uh, don't hike alone. And that's because if something happens to you, um, there is no one there to to help you. So if you are, if you're going to insist on hiking alone, I would very much recommend you carry a phone with you, so that if worse comes to worse, you can call nine one one. Great. And if people want to become more involved with Sierra Club and our hiking, or join us for a service project, how can they find? Uh, is there a calendar available? How do we see what upcoming hikes the Oahu Group is okay. having? So we have several uh, places where you can look. We have our website, uh, uh, Sierra Club Hawaii dot org. I think or is it com? Org. Org. <laughs> Sierra Club Hawaii dot org. And then we have our, our um, Facebook page. We also have our our quarterly newsletter, the Malama Ika Honua. Um, they can call the office, or they can call, in fact, the, probably the best thing is to call the leader of the outing you're interested in going to. So at the end of the description of each outing is the leader's name and contact, either email address or phone number. The best way to learn about that particular outing is to call the leader, and they can give you all the uh, information you want on it. Right, so um, there's four groups in the Sierra Club of Hawaii. The Oahu group has their own page, Sierra Club Oahu. So if you're looking on just Oahu hikes, that's where you can look. And yeah. there's a list and the calendar. Right. And like you said, almost weekly, well, I think definitely. Yeah, every hikes. week, every yeah. weekend we have either a hike, a service project, uh, here on island or a neighbor island uh, service trip. So we have various ways to participate. And, and we also have easy hikes. So if you don't want to go on a long hike and, and get hot and sweaty and muddy, there's short, easy hikes that don't take much more than a couple hours. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back. Great. Aloha. I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apachella. Thank you. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. This 
is Jody Malinowski back on Hawaii is my mainland, talking about hiking and trail issues on Oahu. Uh, joining me is Randy Ching, our outings leader of nearly 25 years. <laughs> So Randy, you've been doing this for 25 years. I know a bunch of the other outings leaders have been doing this for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. So is the outings program looking for new volunteer leaders? How do people become more involved in joining the program? And what are some of the requirements to do so? OK, so there are very few requirements, really, to become an outings leader. Yeah, so the, the, the main ones are you got to be 18 years old, Sierra Club member, and be certified in first aid and CPR. That's sort of the base, the basic, the minimum. And, and really, it's not much more than coming out to on our outings, seeing that you like being on a Sierra Club outing, and say, hey, I want to do this. I want to lead these outings. And so uh, the process can be long or short, depending on how, how much time you can uh, uh, contribute. But... Basically, it's just um, see how the outings work and then find a mentor. The mentor will tell you this is what the process uh, involves. And then you just go ahead and do it. And eventually, you do a checkout hike. You get certified. And then you're an outings leader. So it's really very, it's, it's, it's a basic, it's a very simple process. But it can take time, especially if you're full-time working and you can only maybe come out once or twice a month, then the process will take a while. Right, and yeah. I think when you do become certified, you only have to lead a couple of hikes every year. Yeah, so, so to stay certified, it's like two hikes a year, or, or it doesn't have a hike, two outings a year, mm. and, and most of the time it'll be hikes. Um, I, when I first started in 1993 as an outings leader, I usually led about three outings a month. Wow. So I was... Every, and I led all the hard hikes. Mm. I led all the tough hikes because nobody else wanted to do it. And he says, well, you know, why don't you lead them? And I says, sure. So I basically, we went all over the island and I led all the, one, all the tough ones, all the dangerous ones, the ones where people are, are scared to go and, you know, they hear people die and all of this stuff. <laughs> so, but I, I, nobody ever died on me uh, <laughs> while I was uh, a leader. Um, although I had one, there was one hike where, you know, this guy had a, a apparent heart attack, and I thought, oh my God, this is really bad because I didn't have a cell phone. Um, so I sat down with him for about an hour. We talked story. And then he said, you know what? I feel better. I think I think I can make it. So I, I accompanied him down. This was a, uh, um, uh, it's, it, <laughs> it's the one below um, <laughs> Kaala, second tallest peak on a while anyway so we, we climbed down it's uh, got these dangerous dikes you know and stuff it's really mm -hmm. dangerous and we got there and the, the group was still waiting for us they had waited like over an hour for us and they thought oh my god that something happened to the two of us but they waited and they, it ended up happily that's the closest i've come to losing someone on the trail but uh, uh I haven't yet, so I'll cross my fingers, you know. I don't think we'll have to worry about no, that. No, I hope not. Safety is kind of a prominent factor of the Sierra Club. It is the most So the one thing we tell leaders is that's number one. Whenever you're leading an outing, the first thing uppermost in your mind has to be participant safety, always. Right. And I know this past year there's been a record number of rescues on trails already. And I think it's just people underestimating their abilities or seeing a really cool picture and then wanting to like pursue a hike and they aren't necessarily prepared, not bringing enough water, things like that. So that's why hiking with the club is good because you guys are all CPR or first aid certified. Yes, that, that is true. So um, one of the things that social media has done is it has basically inspired people to hike it which is good but they're not really aware of the conditions mm -hmm. they'll be facing so uh, our outings leaders are, are the best I mean it's good to go to Sierra because we're very familiar with the terrain and we know what the dangers are what to look out for uh, the people who go on the internet and say oh, look at this hike on YouTube with the GoPro camera and you mm -hmm. know all of that mm -hmm. and they said oh my god this looks so great 
and they go up there and they freeze or they get really tired or their legs cramp or something and then the sun goes down and they're stuck on the mountain and they've never spent one night of their life hanging out on the trail yeah which is like so cool i've done it many times and it's like it's the coolest thing but they they're like really scared because oh my god i am going to get eaten alive by giant mosquitoes or something so they call 911 and 911 comes and rescues them but they had no idea what they were getting into not to say they're stupid or or anything like that but they're unaware right of hiking conditions on oahu so one of the things that uh, sierra club is really good at is we we know the hiking conditions so we tell people be you know watch out for this we know where all the dangerous spots on the trail are yeah that's why you should hike with us or hawaiian trail and mountain club i'll give a shout out to them because a lot of them are my friends you know that. <laughs> yeah so let's talk about what uh, a most recent trail issue, one that you've been focusing on, and that's haiku stairs. So like like you said, a lot of people on social media, the trail is closed, it's illegal to do, but a that lot of people do from the very early to, you know, kind that of. That doesn't stop them. Because right. you know, they get there before the guard does. Right. So they get there at 3.30 in the morning, or four o'clock before the guard gets there, and they climb over the fence, or they go through a hole in the fence. So Haiku Stairs is a really good example of, I would say, the overutilization of our resource. Because if handled correctly, the, the Haiku Stairs could be a tremendous opportunity for Oahu to, to have a, sort of this ecotourism kind of deal where people go up and get this great experience, but they also learn a lot because they can learn about the history of mm -hmm. it, how it came to be, why the stairs were put there. And so there'd they, they, be this combined education as well as an outdoorsy experience. So we think it's a, it's a great resource, but it's become this apparently this problem for the border water supply because they don't have an enforcement arm. So they basically want to tear the stairs up because they don't have the personnel or the resources yeah. to make sure that they can keep the hikers out. So I, I, I hate to say this, but I, um, you know, I went <laughs> to the hole in the fence one time and uh -huh. I hiked up. I didn't do it after the first time, but I, I did one time. And it's fantastic. It's incredible. I mean, it's just so unique on a while. Nothing, there is no other hike, no other trail like that on a while so so if we could if we could somehow stress to people this is how you safely hike this is this is um, what you'll be looking at this is what you'll be seeing it's, it, it offers a tremendous opportunity for for tourists but we're not there yet right so i know you submitted public comments on the draft environmental assessment was it for the haiku stairs Yes, yes. draft year, yes. Right, so still waiting to hear back what the response is to the comments, but yes. I know that you advocated that we open the stairs up and allow people to go and work out some system where, you know, it's safe and we can do it, yes. but to not rip the stairs down, basically. Right, and we, so we've lost a lot of trails. We've lost a lot of trails in the last 20 years. I mean, Ed and I, Ed Mercy, one of another audience leader, he and I, we sat down, we listed all the trails we could think of that have been, uh, close to public access. We came up with a list of 25 trails in the last 20 years. So we've been losing lots of public access to trails. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we're losing it, we think, is there's so many people coming to Hawaii now and hiking because of the internet and all of this, YouTube, whatever, that they go up there in hordes, they, they get the residents who live near the trailhead very upset at them. And the residents complain to the mayor or the city council or the state legislature or to Zusan Case or whoever the person they can think of to call and say, oh, these hikers, they're so inconsiderate. They're wiping their feet on my, on my lawn. They're using my water hose, you know, and, and they're, they talk loud at three, uh, four in the morning or seven in the morning. And so the, a lot of the hikers are, in fact, inconsiderate or they're oblivious, which is worse probably um, but they get the residents very upset and so our job is to help the hikers understand the more kinds of uh, behavior they exhibit like this the more the chances 
they'll lose that access to the trail because the the government officials will be listening to the residents say, oh well you know we 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 can't uh, control this kind of behavior we have to close the trail right which is ironic because people come to hike on the trail yes and the influx of people is also partially yes. the reason why the trails are getting closed. right so so for example the Naalahele Oahu person which is Kyle Parsons he's he's uh, uh, come up with a sign to put at the trailhead for Kulio'o and he wants to kind of incorporate all this uh, into the sign basically saying be considerate uh, you might lose the trail if you don't you know, and, 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 and really the the residents' concerns range from lack of street parking to the noise to the uh, fact that the hikers leave their litter, their opala behind. And so a lot of the things that are on that sign is to say, be considerate of the people who live here. And you know, uh, just just put yourself in their place and, 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 and be courteous, be, be a responsible hiker. And so, we, we gave some suggestions to Kyle to put on the signs and we'll see what, what comes out of it. Yeah. Great, so we'll keep, we'll keep working on this. Yes, yes. absolutely. Keep fighting for money, more money, resources to maintain these trails and you guys are doing a great job doing education, so. Oh, I, I hope so. <laughs> so everything is connected mm -hmm. and we know that the Sierra Club is also focusing on some social justice, economic justice issues, so looking forward to the next session and some of the work that we do at the City Council as well in those things. And um, the Sierra Club Oahu Group is a nonprofit organization, so like Think Tech Hawaii, we rely on volunteer support like yours as well as monthly contributions. So if people are interested in finding out more about the Sierra Club and to support our work, they can visit our website at sierraclubawahu.org. And to learn more about Think Tech, it's thinktechhawaii.org. Com. And on uh, behalf of the Sierra Club Oahu Group, and thank you so much to Randy Ching for coming on this episode. Thank you to Kali Lucas and Think Tech for allowing us to hijack the <laughs> Hawaii is my mainland show and to push some of our issues. And um, that's it. Happy Aloha Friday. Thank you.